hello from Regnum on the final full day of Hull City's warm weather training camp here in Antalya on what is a beautiful Friday evening. Deceptively chilly though, I've got to say, and a bit windy, just like Scarborough. Anyway, it's been a really successful trip, I think, for Hull City. Uh, the staff and the players, Liam Rossini, I sat down with him just a little while ago uh, and we reflected on the trip. He was keen to come out here, not for tactical work or anything like that, primarily to get bonding, a bonding experience for his players. Obviously, seven new players in January. Not all of them, of course, are here. We know Noah Ohio is away with the Netherlands under-21 side, but the rest of them are here. Uh, and I think he viewed this as crucial in the final weeks of the season. He did it when Hull City won promotion when he was a player here. He did it with Brighton. Uh, and I think getting away in the March international break just to recharge the batteries a little bit to change a change of scenery some sunshine um and to spend some quality time with each other they've been able to do that they've been out on the golf course they've done various you know whether it's playing tennis paddle uh you know bowling or whatever else it doesn't matter the ma what matters was you know living in each other's pockets for a week in a really nice complex and um hopefully you know in the final nine games of the season we will they will reap the benefit. And I think that is Liam's attitude. Very positive. Uh, of course, they had the friendly yesterday, which I know there's been a bit of a, uh, a reaction, certainly on social media, which is you know understandable. It's social media uh, to the friendly defeat to Curacao. But I think that game, well, that game was scheduled for a specific reason. It was scheduled to give fringe players and players coming back from injury the opportunity to, um, to get minutes that they've not had. You know, Aaron Connolly hasn't had 90 minutes he got 90 minutes yesterday it wasn't a great 90 minutes admittedly but he got 90 minutes billy sharp got 90 minutes greg doherty got 90 minutes um ivor pandor his first 90 minutes and did really well i thought you know sean mclaughlin is going to be needed at, on good friday and, and alan road on easter monday because of jacob Greaves' suspension he got 90 minutes as captain what a moment it was for rocco coyle for ollie green two Sellers fleming got more minutes on the pitch and even a player, Brandon Fleming, you know, he's had a really, really difficult season. You know, his move to Shrewsbury didn't work out. You know, he faces an uncertain future. So for him to come and play, um, even even 20 minutes or whatever it was, that is crucially important. But, the, you know, forget the friendly. It doesn't matter. The overriding thing here was to come away and, and for the players to get some TLC. And, you know, they've got nine games. They're going back into... You know, the running, nine games start on Friday. Um, there will be no rest. There will be no... It is going to be frantic. Let's make no bones about it. The Easter weekend, they play Friday, they play Saturday. Sorry, they play Friday, they play Monday. And that Yorkshire Derby at Ellen Road is going to be an, an absolute humdinger, isn't it? And uh, they've got an opportunity over the next nine games. When we come back to Turkey in pre-season, let's hope that City are coming back as a, to prepare for a Premier League campaign because... That is ultimately the, the, the end goal here. Um, I've got to also say that the supporters, <coughs> excuse me, the supporters who have been staying at uh, the nearby Kremlin Palace Hotel, no doubt they've had a, a, a great time, those of them that have been able to take their drink anyway. And, um, you know, it, supporters, I, I often think there's a, a huge disconnect in football between football clubs, the players and the supporters. Um, we see it particularly at the top of the Premier League um, and, and, and top of European football. We've seen it with the FA in the last 24 hours. Not the, the logo, contro the, the St George Cross controversy. I'm not interested in that. The, the, the colours of the logo get changed all the time. I think that's been a ridiculous overreaction. For me, the cost of the shirt, £125 for a football shirt, shows where football is at. And I think Hull City are a club that are booking that trend. This is the second time that... That Ajun has, has, has paid for fans to come out. Of course, in what 16 months ago or whatever it was, in the World Cup break, 320 fans came out and stayed at the Grand Park Lara, uh, whilst the team stayed here. That was a fantastic experience for those those fans. And again, this week, you know, another hundred have come out. They've 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 been you know, wined and dined, all inclusive. Uh, they, they they went to a theme park. They've done various other bits and pieces. They came to watch training. They came to watch the game yesterday. You know, at training, at the end of the training, they were able just to mingle with the players. You know, it's something that happened, what, 50 years, 60 years ago? They were able just to walk around, the walk on the pitch and just chat to players and, you know, have conversations over a, a slice of baklava. And that is an experience that those fans will never forget. And 
that, that doesn't happen. You know, clubs don't do that anymore. And it isn't just the word, you know, the, 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 this holiday will get a lot of attention, has got a lot of attention for obvious reasons. It's unique. But they do stuff on the local level, the club do. You know, bowling um, with fans, whether it's FIFA nights, as it was then, you know, FC24 now, um, nights with young fans, and God knows what else they do in the community. It's amazing. Low ticket prices. They're doing everything they can, this football club, to to engage the fan base, to bring fans closer to the football club. Liam is, you know, very open. He, he went and spoke to the supporters at, before training yesterday and was mingling and chatting to them. And, um, you know, that's, that's a rarity and it should be treasured. And I, you have to, you know, you call out football clubs for a lot of the stuff they do. Some of it is, is, um, is not great. I'm not talking about Hull City. I'm talking about in general. But I think Hull City are a club that, are getting it right and I, I think we should applaud them and you know opportunities like this are are incredibly rare and they, they should be heralded and hopefully it can happen again uh, if it doesn't happen again then those fans that have been able to come out here have, have had an, an incredible opportunity and I just think it's a sign of where the football club is at right now um, irrespective of what happens on the pitch if they get promoted fantastic if they don't get promoted we all go again and you know that doesn't change the fact that this football club is going in the right direction and you know, there's so much to be positive about you know the work that the football club are doing the engagement with their supporters the way they fit the supporters are being made to feel valued uh, is fantastic and there's nine games to to, to 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 become heroes there's nine games to get promotion embrace it be excited don't be nervous don't be don't be you know apprehensive or apply too much pressure because they're probably ahead of schedule in, in where the where we expect them to be uh, perhaps January's recruitment has, has, has raised expectations a little, probably. Uh, but if, if you know everybody's got all out for promotion, of course. But if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. The the, the, the club is in a healthy position, and there's reason to be. <coughs> excuse me. There's reason to be excited and optimistic. So um, that's it from from here at Regnum. It's been a wonderful week. I've got. To, I can't sign off from here without saying thank you to the football club um for giving us media access that we've had we've we've been able to stay in the hotel with the team mill around the team eat with the team be with the team um you know go to training uh just be around them it, it's an incredible it's incredibly rare um and i have to say thank you to liam and his coaching staff the players uh Ajun and tan for, for you know putting us up in in what is an astonishingly beautiful hotel uh, again, because we were here um, back in November 2022 for the World Cup, and I hope you know you've been able to, you know, I hope our coverage has, has given you an insight into what what it's like here behind the scenes. Because as I say, this is rare for 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 media, external media, to be given access like this. And as I say, the club are brilliant with in general. Uh, so thank you to the club uh, for making it all possible. So uh, that's it from here. We've got plenty more to come over the next few days, and of course, from Monday we'll be building up to Stoke on Good Friday.